Hello, today's video is a tour of Rome and I'm going to try and show you as many sites as possible in one day. We're starting our day on the western side of Rome at a train station called Rome Aurelia. We found some really good accommodation close to the station and it was a short train journey into central Rome. We got off the train at Trastevere station, then Rossella and I walked across the river Tiber to our first attraction. The Mouth of Truth, or in Italian La Bocca della Verità, is a disc of marble which weighs around 1,300 kilos. It dates from ancient Roman times and it's believed to have been used as a rainwater drain. Legend has it that the mouth will close onto the hand of anybody who places their hand inside and then tells a lie. People will queue for hours just to place their hand into the mouth of truth. However, we want to see as much as possible of Rome, so we contented ourselves with a quick look through the railings. <laughs> We then walked around the corner to Circus Maximus, or Circo Massimo. This is where the ancient Romans had their chariot races, and thanks to the preservation of this area, it's very easy to see exactly where this happened. It's incredible to think that at one time there was a stadium here which could hold 250,000 people. We then made our way towards the Colosseum via Palatine Hill, which is one of the oldest inhabited parts of Rome, and legend has it is where Romulus and Remus suckled from the she-wolf. <coughs> our next site is the Colosseum, or Il Colosseo. I'm going to stop talking a minute and let you enjoy the atmosphere at this world-class monument. The correct name for the Colosseum is the Flavian Amphitheatre, but it became known as the Colosseum thanks to a colossal statue made of bronze of the Emperor Nero. This was nearly as tall as the Statue of Liberty, despite the fact it was forged nearly 2,000 years ago. With a maximum capacity of 80,000 people, the Colosseum is the largest amphitheatre ever built. In my opinion, the best way to see Rome is by walking it on foot. Most of the attractions are concentrated around the centre, the sidewalks are good, and everywhere you go there's something interesting to look at. Roman ruins, street artists, and if you're really lucky, some music and crazy dancing. Here we are arriving at our next attraction, the Altar of the Fatherland, l'Altare della Patria. This is one of the more recent additions to Rome's skyline, having been completed in 1925. This monument was built in honour of the first king of the unified Italy and has a massive area of 17,000 square metres. This makes it the largest monument in Rome, but has also caused some controversy over the years, mainly because of the archaeological damage that was caused during its construction. Its recent construction leads us to something else which may be surprising to a lot of people. This is the fact that Italy has only been the country that we know today since 1861, 85 years after the United States Declaration of Independence was ratified. This monument is free to enter and I've got a couple of tips for you. First of all, wear some sunglasses because the sun reflecting off the white marble can be absolutely blinding at times. And the second tip is that you can go up onto the roof and from there you can get a great view of the skyscape of Rome. From the roof we spotted our next destination. We then walked to the Pantheon, Il Pantheon. 
which is one of the most amazing buildings in Rome, if not the world. Let's start by having a look at these 16 granite columns, each of which is 12 metres tall, 1.5 metres wide and weighs 60 tonnes. These were quarried in Egypt, over 1,500 miles away as the crow flies. Each column is made from a single massive piece of granite, and once they'd been quarried from the desert, they had to be dragged on gigantic sleds across the desert to get to the River Nile. During the spring floods, the water level was high enough in the Nile for the columns to be transported to the sea via the river. Then they were loaded onto ships and taken across the Mediterranean to Ostia, where they were placed onto wooden barges and taken up the River Tiber into Rome, before finally being dragged to the site of the Pantheon. This will give you something you can think about if you have to wait in line to get in. The Pantheon is one of the best preserved ancient buildings in Rome, thanks to the fact that it's been in continuous use since it was built. For the last 1,400 years it's been used as a Christian church. Looking up we can see an awe-inspiring feat of ancient engineering. Almost 2,000 years after it was built, the Pantheon's dome is still the world's largest unreinforced concrete dome. The dome weighs over 4,500 tonnes, and in the centre has a 9 metre wide opening called an oculus. This, along with the entrance door, are the only two sources of natural light in the Pantheon. Entrance to the Pantheon is free, and although it can get quite busy, it's well worth a visit just to see this amazing building. Another advantage to travelling on foot is that you can stumble across things that you never would have otherwise seen. In our case, we accidentally found the Church of St Ignatius. It's free to get in, it has some beautiful frescoes on the ceiling, but you must take care not to make too much noise. We next visited the Trevi Fountain, La Fontana di Trevi. This has to be one of the most famous fountains in the world. Because of this, it can absolutely throng with tourists so it may take some time for you to get down to the water's edge. Once you get to the water's edge, depending on the season, you may wish to dip your hands in there to cool down a touch, and you may also want to join in with the coin throwing tradition. Every day it's estimated that 3,000 euros are thrown into the Trevi Fountain by tourists. We next visited the Spanish Steps, La Scalinata di Trinità dei Monti, Yes, you're right, it did take me four attempts to say that. This is another place that you might find large numbers of tourists, but the view from the top of the steps is well worth weaving your way through. You may be able to gain some energy by eating some street food before heading up the steps. We visited around Halloween time, and at the bottom of the steps you could find freshly roasted chestnuts. From the steps you get a panoramic view in a westerly direction, so this can be a really nice place to watch the sunset. Incidentally, if you're into your designer shopping, you might want to take a walk down the road in centre screen. Some of the shops here include Dior, Gucci, Prada, Bulgari, Cartier, Louis Vuitton, Giorgio Armani, Tiffany and D&G. If you prefer something a little bit more characteristic, at the top of the Spanish steps you can often find artists selling their paintings. And for anyone with a passion for antiques, there can't be many cities in the world where you can find artefacts like this for sale. We are definitely not big spenders, so after a brief spot of window shopping, we headed to Piazza Navona, where you can find romantic restaurants, beautifully carved fountains, and a relaxed family atmosphere. Rome is a family-friendly city, and it's common to see kids of all ages out on the streets late at night. It's also a food lover's paradise, and there's only so much of this, and this, and this, and this, that you can take before you find yourself looking for a restaurant in which to sit down and order some delicious food for yourself. What more could you ask for? World class food? perfect company and a glass of wine or two.
Peekaboo. <laughs> After we'd finished our meal, we walked back towards the train station, discovering some more street music on the way. Rome is a very safe city and we had no qualms whatsoever walking around at night. This underground road tunnel was probably the ugliest part of our walk home, but Rome always has a surprise up its sleeve and from the end of the tunnel we got a view of the dome of St Peter's Basilica aka the Vatican. Rome wasn't built in a day, and you can't see it in a day either. You could easily spend a week visiting the major attractions and you'd still have only scratched the surface of this incredible city. After one final sweet snack, we headed back to our accommodation, which we chose thanks to its free parking and also spa and swimming pool facilities. We stayed there for an excellent price, and if you want to know any more details, please check the description of the video. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you've got any tips for visiting Rome, please leave them in the comments below the video. Take a look at my YouTube channel, and if you like what you see, then subscribe! Ciao!